Welcome to another video. I got this question also as a request in an email, so if you have any questions, I'm going to look at them and see if I'm able to answer them. I think I'm able to answer this one because it's not complicated. Um, if I have not responded to your email, I ask for your forgiveness, okay? I'm going to go through all the emails and see whichever has questions that I can answer. If I can't answer it, maybe that's why I haven't answered it, okay? Here, we want to find the value of n. By the way, n has to be a natural number because um, we're dealing with factorials in this case, as you can see. So you have n cubed is equal to n plus 2. Now, this is not factorial factorial. This is actually what you call double factorial. Now, a double factorial is not the same thing as the regular factorial. And if you're able to distinguish between a regular factorial and a double factorial, you'll be able to answer this by just simple inspection. Let's get into the video. So what is a double factorial? You see, in a single factorial, which we call the factorial process, what you're go doing is you're going from n to n minus 1 to n minus 2 to n minus 3, and you're multiplying until you get to 1. However, when you're doing double factorial, you're not skipping one step. You're skipping two steps at a time. The number of steps you skip is the number of exclamation marks you get at the end of the expression. And that's the only part that may confuse anyone. Once you get that, you're good. So here, now, what we notice is that this is n cubed, which means this has to be a perfect cube. So all the options we have will be 1, or 8, or 27, or, so the numbers here will be 1, 8, 27. As you can see, the number is either even or odd, and that's important because it's necessary for you to know where you're going to end when you do double factorials. Now, when you do single factorials, you do, so look, um, we have n factorial can be written as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times See, this is what you're doing until you get all the way to 1. But when you're doing a double factorial, you don't know whether you're going to end at 1. Sometimes you end at 1, sometimes you end at 2. Okay, so you're going to have, if you have n double factorial, your answer is going to be n times n minus 2 times n minus 4, and you go on like that until you get to 2. You stop at 2 because you won't go all the way to 0 because 0 is not a natural number, so we're going to end here. And this only happens if you started with an even number, so if n is even. So you go from 6 times 4 times 2. You can't subtract 2 because then if you do times 0, it wipes out everything. So you're going to stop here for double factorial. But if the number you started with is odd, then you're going to go n times n minus 2 times n minus 4 times. You keep going until you get to 1. It means you started with an odd number because then if you keep subtracting 2, 2, 2, you're going to end up at 1. So right here, we do not know where this is going to end. But one thing we know is that this is a perfect cube and this is a double factorial. So let's give it a shot. Let's say assuming n is, let's do odd, then it means n cubed is odd. The cube of an odd number is odd, right? So that means if the left-hand side is odd, this right-hand side must be odd. There is no way out. See, that's the thing about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. You can, no matter what you do, if this is odd, this has to be odd. Okay? So that means that all the numbers we're multiplying on this side will be odd numbers. So n plus 2 is odd. Okay? So it means that n cubed will be one of the odd multiple, all odd, one of the odd um, perfect cubes. 
okay? And what are they? So n cubed will be equal to 1 or 27 or 125 or um, what is 7 cubed? 7 times 7 is 49 times 7 is going to be 343. Okay, 343. Okay, now these are the first four odd perfect cubes. Your answer has to be one of these and not more than it. Why? Okay, I'm trying to explain. I know I could have gotten the answer immediately, but the person who sent this said, I want enough detail. So I'm, I'm doing this because of you, okay? Cubic functions rise, but they don't rise as quickly as exponential functions. So once the exponential function starts off, it just goes poof. And the cubic function can never catch up when n becomes too big. So you want to look for the small odd numbers like 1 or 3 or 5 or 7. Those are the possible answers you're going to be looking at because of the nature of the two things that you're equating. So here you're going to say that this is either 1, but it cannot. Can it be 1? Well, we can say 1 cubed. So testing. Okay, um, values of n, so we can say 1 cubed is equal to 1 plus 2 double factorial, which is equal to 3 times 1, which is 3. This is equal to 3 is not true. So let's go to the next number. 3 cubed is 27. It's supposed to be, this is now going to be 3 plus 2 double factorial, which is going to be 5 times 3 times 1. And what's that? 15. Nope. 27 is not equal to 15. So 5 cubed will be equal to, so this is 5 plus 2 factor, double factorial, which is equal to 7 times 5 times 3 times 1. And this is going to be 35 times 3, which is 105. Okay, now this is 125 and this is 105. So if let's go back to what we've done. The polynomial was less than the double factorial, double factorial. But here, the polynomial, which is 27, is greater. So it means they've crossed. Is there a chance they might cross again? Okay. So that point where they cross is a possible answer, but let's see. Let's try one more. So we're going to have 7 cubed will be equal to 7 plus 2. Double factorial will be equal to 9 times 7 times 5 times 3 uh, times 1. And what will this be? This is going to be what is half of um, 9, 4.5. That's how I multiply by 5. <laughs> so now let's see if n is an even number. And the first even number we're going to try is 2. So we say that if n is even, then we try 2. 2 cubed will be equal to 2 plus 2 double factorial. And what would that be? That would be equal to 4 times 2. And that's it. Equals 8. Look, we got the answer. At least we got one of the answers. If there are more than one answers, you got 2 cubed is equal to 8. So that means n equals 2 is a solution. Okay, now like I said, remember there's this suspicion that there's a crossing happening here. Let's go check again. Um, let's do n equals... Um, if n equals 4. So we say 4 cubed will be equal to... Let's do it. It's going to be 4 plus 2 double factorial, which is equal to 6 times, what is it? So here they are equal. And remember we said these grows this grows faster. So um, let's see. 6 times 4 times 2 will be equal to 8 times 4, 48. So this is equal to 48. But 4 cubed is 64. 64, so here the polynomial 
is greater than this. So there's hope that there's another number ahead of us, right? Because there's going to be a point where this is going to overtake this. There might be some equality. Let's try it again. So we go, um, so no, this is a no. Hey, we didn't say no here. Everything here is a no. Okay, they're not equal. So let's do six cubed. Six cubed is six times six times six, which is 216. Okay, let's go here. This is going to be six plus um, six plus two, double factorial, which is going to be eight times six times four times two. And what would that be? Six times six is 36, 38, 384. I hope that's correct. Okay, so this is 384, this is 216. Wow, that was fast. So they must have crossed. But now the suspicion of both of them crossing at five is already taken care of because we tried five and this 125 was not the same thing as 105. Yeah, this is 105, this is 125. So it means that's the crossing it's not gonna happen. And this is already escaped. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. Do you think if we pick another odd, odd number, do you think we're gonna get another intersection? I actually don't think so. But let's just try, let's try nine. 11 times nine times seven times five times five times three times one. So I checked with my calculator, and this number is greater than 10,000. And this, that's crazy. And this number, um, nine, if uh, nine cubed is just 729, not even up to 1,000. So that means that the polynomial function will no longer catch up with this, whether it's even or odd, because here we already established that this number is 216, but this number is 384. So as you keep going from now on, it will get bigger and bigger. So the only time that this is equal to what you have here is when n is equal to 2. There is no other solution that I can foresee. I wish I could do it more. But because this is discrete mathematics, uh, there are no functions I want to write because and I have to keep scaling by two. I hope this was meaningful. So from here, the conclusion is that there is only one solution and that n equals two is that solution. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.